We are in the middle of that right now. Here's that article that I was talking about, Vaxxers, Anti-Vaxxers, and Irrational Stance by Physicians. And what's really important, the points in here, we found a letter that was written by the American Associations of Surgeons and Physicians. And in this letter, I wish I would have wrote the letter. It says almost exactly what I would have wanted to say. But it was by the American Association of Physicians and Surgeons. <clears throat> and we printed the letter word for word in this article. Put a link back to their website and framed it. Meaning, here's what it says. Evidence that Big Pharma, this is our words, Evidence that Big Pharma and the federal agencies who oversee them, like the FDA and CDC, cannot be trusted to ensure our safety is everywhere. Examples include the opioid crisis, blood pressure drug recalls due to carcinogens. Did you know that there have been blood pressure drugs? Like you have high blood pressure, take these drugs. There have been lots and lots of recalls for high blood pressure drugs because they found they have been laced with carcinogens. What are the two most biggest killers in the United States? Heart disease and cancer. Lifestyle diseases, not genetic diseases. Lifestyle and environmental diseases. So the evidence is everywhere. Examples include the opioid crisis, blood pressure drug recalls due to carcinogens, baby aspirin to prevent first heart attacks do more harm than good. Hey, everybody take a baby aspirin. Do you know that that has been false all along, even though it's been sold as the truth for decades, and now we're finding it causes more harm than good? So on the eighth page, in a little blurb, all the way at the bottom, it says something like, hey, research says that you shouldn't take baby aspirin anymore for heart problems because it doesn't help. It's not on the front page, it's on the eighth page. <clears throat> Autism rate skyrocketing, the epidemic of nerve disorders. Listen, we have an epidemic of nerve disorders in this country from Alzheimer's in seniors to autism in kids and so many things in between that you and I, as chiropractors, experts, in the care of the spine and the nervous system need to take the lead. This is our wheelhouse. Here's the letter. I'll let you go look it up and read it. We did a survey and we asked, who should be responsible for the billions of dollars being paid to families for injuries and deaths caused by mandatory vaccinations? Who should be responsible for that? And we gave people a choice, three choices, you can pick more than one. The choices are vaccine manufacturers, government officials, or taxpayers. So guess, who do you think, anybody take that survey just out of curiosity? See, it didn't even include you. I bet you wish you would have taken that survey, right? So, guess what the results were? Who do you think, People said should be responsible. Who do you think was number one? The drug manufacturers, 96%. Second was the politicians, government officials, 48%. And third, taxpayers, 4%. You know what it is now? It's 100% taxpayer. It is 100% taxpayer. Come on, my colleagues, we have so much work to do. We have so much work to do. You think you're getting old and you wanna just get laid back and chill out and retire? Okay, well, chill out differently. Get your ass out of your chair and go to work. Chill out differently. <clears throat> Children's longevity is being threatened. More importantly, their quality of life is being threatened. So we are raising a generation of dependent children, and here's the other part of it that's so important. Do you know how much money there is in creating and keeping alive a generation of neurologically damaged young people? 
There's a lot of money in that. There's a lot of money in that. Come on. So there is a concern. And this kid changed my life. I do 100-year lifestyle talks for communities. I'm going back to Alabama to do another one in a couple of months. This one I did in Seattle, Washington, Bellevue, Washington, right outside of Seattle. And I gave this talk. It was Dr. Cummins. He's one of our 100-year lifestyle affiliate offices. And he wanted to do this event. So we did this event in a community center, had a couple of hundred people there. And when it was over, everybody loved it. Standing ovation, very inspiring. Everybody was motivated. The patients, the community leaders, the people that were there were inspired. And afterwards, I was talking to this 98-year-old World War II veteran, one of our greatest generation. And I was looking up to him. He was like 6'5". And I'm looking up to him, and we're having an amazing conversation. He's strong, fit, healthy, been under chiropractic care for years. And it was an amazing interaction. And while we're talking, I could feel little Nico, who is the shortest, tiniest, cutest, smallest 10-year-old maybe that I had ever seen, and he's looking up at me like this and patiently waiting like he had to pee to have a conversation with me. And he says, finally, I said to this World War II veteran, I said, uh, thank you, it's such a pleasure, honor to meet you, thank you for your service and for everything. And I turned over to Nico and he looks up at me and he says these words, he says, Dr. Plasker, you changed my life today. And I'm like, what? Who are you? What? What do you mean? What do you, I mean, how old are you? Who are you? What do you mean? I didn't even know you were here. Who are you? He says, my name is Nico. I'm 10 years old. And I want you to listen to what Nico says to me. He says, I said, Nico, how did this talk change your life today? He said, well, Dr. Plasker, he said, I'm 10 years old, and my grandparents died from cancer. And I have been worried for years that I was going to die from cancer, too. And he says, I'm not worried anymore. And he took off running. And then he turned back and he said, and I want to be a motivational speaker. And he took off running. The next day, in my inbox on Facebook, is Nico's first YouTube. Where he said to me in this YouTube, exactly what I just said to you that he said. Open up this article, watch Nico in his own words. Children's just... Go in the search bar and put in children, and it's one of the articles that will come up. Now, what is the significance of this, my colleagues? Nico is not alone. This younger generation is seeing the suffering of their aging, beloved grandparents, great-grandparents, and they are thinking to themselves, not consciously, unconsciously, it is in them. It is becoming a part of who they are, how they view the world. This is not a thought process that they have. They're not thinking possibility. They're not thinking entrepreneurship. They're not thinking, wow, I can, this is America. This, I can do whatever it is I want to do. They're thinking, holy crap, I don't want to be like that. Is that my destiny? I may as well look at my phone. And then we blame them, and we criticize them, and we judge them, when we don't have any solutions. And I am telling you, my colleagues, we have the solution. We have learned through the 100-year lifestyle that a new conversation, that a new way to look at the world is an answer for a generation that is scared to death of rotting away and decaying. Why bother? And yet we see people all the time. You see people all the time. People that couldn't walk, that get up and start walking. And people that couldn't eat, and all of a sudden they're able to eat. 
and people that couldn't think straight because they were in confusion because of neurological imbalances that you cleared out by adjusting subluxations and clearing out their nervous system. And they start to function better out in the world. And you see people have those results that they didn't even come in for that problem. True or not true? They come in for one thing and the side effect is what we just said. Come on, we have a world that is in desperate need of your leadership, our leadership. Epidemic of nerve disorders. Here's a quote from, this is another one of the articles. This was shared over 700 times. People are reading it all over. They are hungry for a new way. And watch, they don't know what chiropractic is. They don't even care what chiropractic is. They just want to know what can they do, what's in it for them. You know, we think that we know how to educate and market people. We are clueless, typically as an organizations and as a profession. We think that our people thinking that, hey, the best chiropractic advertising is how many times can you say chiropractic or subluxation in a sentence? And that is absurd. Nobody cares. They only want to know what's in it for them. What is the benefit to them? And we're seeing people read these things like crazy. And here's Dr. Zeev. He calls, first of all, he says that he wrote the book, The Growing Epidemic of the 21st Century. And he says that chronic neurological diseases are fast becoming the debilitating epidemic of our time. He says, he goes on to say later, we quote, having a healthy brain and nervous system is vital to being able to think clearly without which our active will lacks intelligent guidance and is weakened. This medical physician using words like intelligence, right, lacks the intelligent guidance. Isn't that what our innate intelligence does? Isn't that what he's saying here? And it is weakened. And getting people to understand the importance of what we do. We go on to say that your nervous system controls and coordinates the function of every cell, tissue, and organ. And of course, we link people up to find a chiropractor in their area. We wrote another article. This is all, these are all on 100yearlifestyle.com. Free, online magazine. The epidemic of fear. This one has been shared, I think, close to 400 times in just a couple of weeks. We just put it up on May 6th. So in about six weeks, it's been shared probably 400 times. It is an awesome article. It's getting a lot of traffic. And it confronts a lot of the things that we just talked about, uh, including vaccinations, antibiotics, all kinds of things that are really important. You can go check it out and see for yourself all the details. And here's what's happening in the senior population with an epidemic of nerve disorders. There should be not one chiropractor anywhere that is ever scrambling to attract a patient. We have more chiropractors every day that are deciding, choosing consciously, you know what, I don't want to be on this insurance plan anymore. I don't like the way they treat me. I don't want to be on that one. I don't like the way they treat me. It's costing me more than it is to deliver the care. And they are not losing patients. They are growing. We have seen the people that we have worked with grow by over a billion dollars over the years delivering high integrity, lifetime chiropractic care, no lying, cheating, or stealing. Where the customer in the office is the one that's paying the bill because they value it. And I'm not saying you should eliminate insurance. That's not what I said. Don't misinterpret what I said. What I'm saying is, is that you have a choice. And the more of these people that are in your practice, the more you can choose. And the more fun that you begin to have in practice, because you have people that they come in, they get their care, they hug you and pay you, and this is gonna blow you away. This one is gonna shock you. You ready? And, you ready? Are you sitting? They say thank you. They say, thank you. Come on. My son's about to join my practice with me. My kids are about to open a bigger space. 
out in Oregon, my other two kids, man, I've never been more excited to be a chiropractor. And for those of you that are thinking about retiring and you're only 60 or 65, what the hell else are you going to do with the next 30 years? <laughs> you're going to drive your spouse crazy. They're going to throw you out of the house. <laughs> Life is a marathon, one sprint at a time. Take care of your body, your mind, and your spine. Do what you love and love what you do. Go for the goal. Be fearless, be bold. Life will surprise you. The road will wind. Stand up to the challenge you're surely to find. You've got to have nerve to adjust to it all. Your 100 is coming. You make the call. We are the first generation in history and this generation needs new leadership. We call it lifetime care for everyone. It's been our core value since the family practice was born back in the late 1990s. And you know what? After 20 years of never wavering from this vision, we have learned so much over the last 20 years. We have, new pe we have people that we coached years ago. We're not a coaching organization anymore. But people that, so many of those people that are coming back realizing like, man, I get it now. I get it. We thought what you were doing was good back then. Holy crap. And somebody asked me the other day, one of our people that just came back, he said, so, you know, what, like, I don't understand. How do, what's going on here? I said, well, it's simple. We're 20 years smarter. Unwavering over that time period. And we've learned a lot along the way. And watch this, my favorite part. The times are catching up with the vision. Do you hear what I just said? The times are catching up with the vision. I heard uh, somebody say one time, sometimes you could be right too soon. It is a special time when your ideals, especially from decades of learning or a century of not caving to the other side, that the world is finally catching up where the trust in the status quo is crumbling and people are searching for a new conversation and new leadership. I am telling you, my colleagues, there has never been a better time in chiropractic, ever. But we have to change our conversation, not change our care. We have to change how we talk to people. We have to stop doing it to appease the politicians within our profession. There's politics, and there's people. And we could fight for the foundational principles in the, in the legislature like we should do through SCCA. We should do that. And the communication of that is different than the communication to the public. And it's the same thing, it's just different words. <clears throat> if you ever saw the movie A Few Good Men with Tom Cruise, where Tom Cruise plays the attorney who's an amazing litigator. How many of you saw the movie? Anybody? And then Demi Moore, she plays a uh, an attorney who's not a litigator and she has no idea how to talk to earthlings. <laughs> so Tom Cruise gives this amazing cross-examination to the doctor who was a witness that was going to jeopardize his client. And he cross-examines him beautifully and slays the doctor on the stand. And then, beautifully done, speaking to the people in a court of law, the jury. And then, as an exclamation point, Demi Moore stands up and states this ridiculous legalese. <laughs> very smart, very brilliantly laid out, all the words that are in the legal books and completely wiped out the benefit of the conversation that was had by Tom Cruise in that scene. How many of you know the scene that I'm talking about, right? So memorable. Well, that's what we have to do. We have to understand that the politics that we battle needs to stay under the roof. And we need to go get to the people and speak in their language in ways that they understand why. One of the things that we do at 100yearlifestyle.com we target everyone's why. 
Typically, chiropractors, you know what we do? We, this is my why. This is my why. Let me tell you why this is my why. In fact, I'll tell you why this is my why so you can have my why. And then we can have the same why. Instead of connecting with people in the way that it matters to them. And that is not compromise. That's common sense. That's common sense. Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, one of the greatest business books of all time, said, begin with the end in mind. We are the first generation in history that is getting this advance notice that whether we like it or not, want to or not, we will probably live longer than we ever thought. Here's Ida again. See, we want 100% for 100 years. Eric is wearing one of the workout shirts that people love. It says 100% for 100 years, 100, 100. Right? Sounds like a good plan, right? 100% for 100 years. It sure beats 68% for 72 years. It sure beats 79% for 81 years. It sure beats 40% for 81 years keeping alive a generation of neurologically damaged kids. It sure beats that. Come on, we got a story to tell, my colleagues. Here's that article from The Atlantic, what happens when we all live to be 100. And you know what's interesting? This is really interesting to me. See, we talk about people having lifetime chiropractic care, keeping the spine and nervous system healthy throughout your lifetime. That's common sense, yes or no? And as chiropractors, we're afraid of that because we have been told that that would be, well, that would be over-utilizing. No, it's only over-utilizing if you bill it to the insurance company because they're only paying for crisis care. This is not over-utilizing. Listen carefully, my colleagues. This is appropriately utilizing. It's just a matter of who's gonna pay. And what do you care? Do the right thing, people will pay. The ones that don't, okay, educate better. The ones that do, great. The ones that don't will be back and at some point they'll, they'll say to you, I should have listened to you 20 years ago, doc. But to give this as a compelling vision and option is vital not just to them, but to reduce the burden on our society. And the medics, here's the thing, the medics want lifetime patients too. These are billboards that Northside Hospital is running. They have, they have grown. They have hospitals on every corner now, just about. Plus doc in the box clinics on every corner. The doctor's names are no longer on the outside of the buildings. It's no longer, wow, I can't wait to graduate and hang my shingle. It's not in anymore, times have changed. The brands are moving in. And they are delivering singular focused conversations that are highly functional and effective regardless of who the doctor is. And watch, here's, they're not marketing. This doesn't say medication, medication, medication. It doesn't say vaccination, vaccination, vaccination. Here's another one. It's a girl, we'll take a breast, we're waiting, no worries. See, this is a lifetime of care in an allopathic world. And here's children's health care that is exploding. I don't know if they're in South Carolina yet, but this is a billboard dedicated to long, healthy lives. This is, they are using longevity, quality of life and longevity, to target the parents to bring in their kids to get shots and drugs, but the billboard does not say shots and drugs. You follow me? One of those things we've learned in a relentless 20 years of this vision is how to market and how to educate. And you say, well, I don't know how to do it. Well, now you don't have to. But you need to change how you're doing things and how you're communicating. This is my 
wife's grandfather, Papa High, turned 100 the day I received the first draft of the book. Amazing guy. So my colleagues, our world is in desperate need of new healthcare leadership. It is. It's in desperate need of new healthcare leadership. By the way, how are we doing so far? You glad to be here? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah? Cool. How are we doing on time? There. 150 is the end, so you've got uh, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Sweet. All right. You having fun, though? Come on, seriously. You having fun? You getting fired up? He's ready to pop out of his chair. You having fun yet? Yes, thank you. I don't mean to turn my back to this side. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I want one. I want one. All right, there you go, man. That was a good one. Good to see you again, my friend. Thank you. Appreciate it. So listen, our world is in desperate need of new healthcare leadership. It is. It is time that we become, I believe, in my humble opinion, the next great generation. It is time that we become the next great generation. We need to think differently. Our care and our models of care and our techniques that we do are the future and the present both at the same time. We just need to educate people better about why and become the next great generation. We need leaders, not robots. I went, <laughs> I had my eyes checked yesterday and it's interesting. I had a concussion five years ago, and ever since the concussion, my eyes have been off. I've been seeing double. I, my vision was bad. So I went and had my eyes checked five years ago, and you know, fortunately my son, as a chiropractor, he adjusted me, did some functional neurology work, and he literally saved my life. I was speaking at a seminar at Life University after probably like two months after this happened. And I didn't realize how messed up I was, but I was repeating myself in the seminar. I was repeating myself in the seminar. <laughs> I was repeating myself in the seminar. Except I didn't know that I was repeating myself in the seminar. And people were coming up to me afterwards and they were saying to me things like, Dr. Plasker, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine, why? And he said, they said, because you're repeating yourself. And I was like, wow. And when like five, six, seven people are coming up to me and telling me that, I was like, man, dude, you must be messed up. And so I can't even imagine how my life would be without chiropractic care. Well, I got, I had my eyes checked, started wearing glasses. Well, I decided that at first, the chiropractic care, the functional neurology that I was getting was making, my, it was making me better. I was getting better. My body was healing. My eyes were getting better. And I found that when I would put my glasses on, I would be like, whoa, now this is weird. So I stopped wearing them for like three months and got my brain and my nervous system continued to clear it out. And I went back and I had my eyes checked again literally just yesterday. And the guy says to me, he says, he came in in a robotic way. And I was like, he says, so you ready? What can I do to help you? I was like, first thing, I don't want to be part of the cattle. I'm an educated consumer. We're going to have a conversation. And I stopped him in his tracks and he paid attention. And what I found afterwards is so many things that I learned is the first thing I learned that my eyes were two stops better because I wasn't wearing glasses and I, my old prescription was way out of whack and they wanted to give me all kinds of lenses to kind of bring the world together because I was seeing double but my innate knew that I needed to do things differently so I got a new prescription for my eyes it's the only prescription that I've ever had is for my eyes in the last probably since high school or junior high school and now it's exciting because I'm not gonna wear these either a lot they're coming off I'm gonna need them this weekend but they're coming off and I'm gonna continue to train my brain and my nervous system this guy was a robot 
the entire system is a system of robots. The allopathic system is a system of robots. Something that changed my life forever. And it's a, I think it explains principles of marketing and concepts of marketing and patient education and community education that are very important for us to understand. I remember I was traveling in an airport and there was a sign. It said, free flu shots. No, flu shots, $25. And there was a line in the airport. And I looked over at the person that was delivering the flu shot and thought to myself, are you kidding? This person couldn't even get a job in a gas station. They had no, no skills, they were sloppy, no people skills. They were sitting there, they were hunched over, they looked very unhealthy. Oh yeah, so $25, yeah, I'll take one, $25, I'll take one. And people were lining up. And this delivery, the flu shot delivery person, had no skills. And you know, I think about us, I think about who we are as a species, chiropractors, right? If you thought of us as a species. We are like the ultimate self-development, personal development group. Do you know that every new guru that comes out with something that's guruish says, well, who should we target market? Well, of course, the chiropractors. <laughs> because we just eat that stuff up. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't. I'm a, people have said, I'm a personal, you know, Plasker, you're a personal development person. I've taught it all over the world. Here's the thing. It's not what's going to change you necessarily. It's not going to change the public's perception of you. It'll change you. It might not change the public's perception of you. And so we work harder on ourselves than any other profession. And we should. But at some point, you've got to work on something else, too. You've got to work on your packaging, how you're communicating, what you're saying, how it's connecting. This flu shot delivery person couldn't fill out a crossword puzzle with three letters in every word. And yet, she knew how to do the robot thing. Come on, if we're going to get to the people, we have to be that good with our messaging. We have to be that good. You know, for years, for a decade, I've been going to associations to try to get them to understand, to have the importance of a common message and a common voice to the people. And we were just too busy trying to survive. So there was no money, so we just did it. And it went from to an international best-selling book. It's translated in languages all over the world, and now it's free online magazine to the world. And the people are getting it because it's a conversation that's relevant. Write that word down, by the way, relevant. So we need leaders, not robots, thinkers, not scripts. I remember uh, Stedman Graham, Oprah Winfrey's boyfriend who endorsed the 100-year lifestyle. I was at a seminar with him one time and he got in front of the audience and, and it, was a, it was a small, focused, group of people that spent a lot of money to be there. I was one of them, my wife and I were one of them. And he sat in the front of the room and here's what he said, you ready? He looked around and he said these words. He said, think! <laughs> think! He's like 6'8". So when he said it, he didn't have like this high screechy voice like I do, I'm just like a little guy. Think. <laughs> it sounded like, like a trombone or a tuba. You're so cute. Can I take you home with me? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you are so cute. I had this realization a little while back that I'm only funny if you're under eight. <laughs> In fact, if you're under eight, I'm hysterical. But if you're eight years in like one day, 
I've become ridiculous. So you're not eight yet, are you? No, you're not, are you? You are? You just turned eight? <laughs> See, so you're just barely eight, right? You just turned eight? Okay, so I'm funny for like another week. <laughs> did we plan this, by the way? Did we plan this out? We didn't even plan this, did we? You are so cute. What's your name? You don't have to talk anymore. It's okay. <laughs> So we need thinkers, not scripts. We need action, not actors. We need synergy, not solo acts. We need character, not characters. In every community. And you know what? You won't have to take a hill. You won't have to stand in front of a machine gun. You won't have to jump into a foxhole. But you will have to speak up and lead. You will have to give great care, educate individuals and families. You will have to be consistent. And we will need to deliver a focused message with collective energy. Our battles will be the utilization of chiropractic care and the congruency. Creating the utilization of chiropractic care to support a healthy spine and nervous system that is congruent with the way that we utilize the care in our own lives. How many of you get checked by a chiropractor at least, at least once every three months, just out of curiosity? Raise your hand high. Any once a monthers? Any once every two weekers? Any once a weekers? How many of you, when you're doing more and your lifestyle is more intense, you utilize more? Raise your hand. How many of you have more than one chiropractor? Close your eyes. If there's two of them here in the room so they don't see that you're using someone else too. How many of you have more than one chiropractor? Because one has a different style that helps you at times where you need a different technique. Raise your hand if you have that. Watch. That is the appropriate utilization of chiropractic care. The only people that should define the appropriate utilization of chiropractic care are our chiropractors. Amen. Not some people sitting in the top of a building that have no clue what we do and they're just trying to save money. For me, it's like, you know what? We don't need your damn money. You just keep doing what you're doing and screwing everybody up. We'll do our job. And I'm not saying we shouldn't fight for the equality of that money at appropriate times. I didn't say that. Did I say that? I didn't say that. You never heard that out of me. But it's not the only fight. The fight is getting to the people. From my perspective, that is the most important battle of our time especially considering that the status quo is crumbling. Think about this question for a minute. If medicine collapsed tomorrow, what would it do for the rise of chiropractic? Let's just say, for example, that there was an opioid crisis and people were becoming addicts all over the place. <laughs> let's just assume, let's just get freaky for a minute and say that 90,000 people every year die from antibiotics, from superbugs. Let's just say that there was an overutilization and that happened. Not that it ever would. But let's just say that there were mass vaccinations that were causing crippling neurological damaging in warp speed record numbers and let's say that happened maybe sometime in the future medicine started to collapse people were losing trust let's just say that the statin drugs that they've been selling for years were causing a alzheimer's epidemic in seniors because it was stripping the cholesterol let's just say with some crazy thought that maybe one day in the future that might happen and medicine started to collapse what would that do for the rise of chiropractic? Answer? Nothing. Nothing! Unless we change our story to get to the people. It is the most significant battle of our time.
and we're doing it. We're doing it. We need to appreciate our technical diversity. You know, how many of you agree with this statement? You ready? How many of you have heard this? Chiropractic first, drug second, surgery last. How many of you agree with that statement? Raise your hand if you agree with that statement. Anybody? Okay. Well, I personally strongly disagree with that statement. See, I think it should be chiropractic first, chiropractic second, different technique if needed, Chiropractic third, another different technique if needed. Chiropractic fourth, with drugs when necessary. Chiropractic fifth, with surgery when necessary. You know what one of our challenges is, talk about getting to the people? People go to a chiropractor and say, you know what, I tried a chiropractor, it didn't work for me. That's the most absurd thing I've ever heard. So try a different style. Try a different, get a second a chiropractic opinion. Refer to each other. We're the only profession that doesn't refer to each other. We need to start referring to each other. And we need to get this in the mind of the consumer so they understand. Listen, we have a deceived population that still thinks egg yolks are bad. You could still get an egg white omelet in a restaurant. There's a chain of them. They're called the Dinosaur Breakfast Restaurants of America. <laughs> Cholesterol, we still think cholesterol causes heart disease. Margarine is better than butter and fat makes you fat. All of these things which we now know to be not true. So we have work to do to get to the people. Our battles will be po po politically protecting our space, no drugs, boundaries, protecting the people as the new guardian of the public health. Come on, it's time. And why battles? People say, oh, but Plaster, come on, I've been doing this a long time. Why battles? Why battles? You know what? And chiropractors, I've had chiropractors come up to me and say, you know, why are there battles, Dr. Plasker? Why? Is it because we're wrong? I said, N no, it's not because we're wrong. It's because our ideals question the status quo. And the status quo is a trillion, multi-trillion dollar machine. We're right. Listen, I love talking to young people. I love telling them this. Listen, if we weren't right, if we weren't relevant, they would leave us alone. The only reason why there's a battle is because we're relevant. And the more relevant we become, and the more traction that we get, the more attacked we will get until we solidify our space. And it's time. It is time. Medicine, the leading cause of death, we all know that. So I'm going to take you back to the beginning of my conversation with you today. So we know that medical errors are responsible for 400,000 deaths every year. You Google it, 400,000 deaths every single year. Do you remember the statistics that I said hang on to this number? Right, remember the beginning of my talk? So we said that from 1941 to 1945, four years of war, four years of the most brutal war in the history of our country, four years uh, with an intent to kill. Four years of bam, 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 four years of that. The equivalent deaths, 400,000 people, equivalent to one year. One year of, oh, let me help you. Oops. My colleagues, come on. We are in desperate need of you and your leadership. Listen, we cannot afford to one chiropractic casualty. And if you decide 
in this moment to be more relevant, you will start having more fun in your practice than ever. One of my friends will be here tomorrow. I know he's coming with his family. I met him. He started using 100-year lifestyle patient education along with all this stuff about six years ago. He was fairly new in practice. His practice has grown by over $30,000 a month cash. Cash. The people want what we have. We just have to be relevant to them. That's a big word, by the way, relevant. It's a big word. We, have, we see more chiropractors doing a million dollars cash than ever. And watch, what's the secret? Do you have to become like this hardcore salesperson? No. You just have to give people a long-term vision and let them choose. Some will say yes, some will say no, but they'll buy the vision. And, and if it's compelling, and you don't have to let go of one piece of what you're doing. Just start giving people an option. Ask them these questions. So Mary, let me ask you a question. You have aging parents, parents. You do. How old is your oldest grandparent? 85. How old are you? 45. Okay, well you could have 40 more years. At what point do you think you should make the health of your spine and nervous system a priority? And do you want to leave your spouse behind or you want to bring them with you over those next 40 years? Well, no, I'd like to like, travel with it. Okay, well then he should come too. Whenever you're ready. We'll be here. You know, if it costs 200, 300, 400 a month, 500 a month, it's a lot less than $10,000 a month to be in an assisted living center. We just have to be relevant. So, I love this story. You ever hear the expression, you never know how far reaching? So, this is my wife Lisa, and this is this young man, his name is Gabe. So one of the things that I do, I do a lot of volunteer work in the profession. I do a lot of behind the scenes stuff. I just love this profession. It's been good to me. It saved my son's life after he was paralyzed in an injury. Most of you have heard that story. I'll tell it tomorrow in my pediatric class. If you come to my pediatric class tomorrow, I'm giving a class right after this, by the way, on longevity, performance, and chiropractic. I would love to see you there, too. One of the things that I, I did, started doing about six years ago, seven years ago, uh, because I'm in Atlanta, and I have spoken at every chiropractic college, and I will continue to speak all over the world. Well. I did this talk, Life University, they have this thing called Life Leadership Weekend. I don't know if any of you have ever been there or, or sent students there. Well, it's an amazing weekend. And the kids decide, they come with their parents or with a friend or with an aunt or an uncle or a cousin or a grandparent, and they'll come and they'll sit, go through a weekend that's an amazing weekend where they learn about chiropractic, they learn about innate intelligence, they learn about subluxation, they learn about adjustments, uh, and then I give the keynote speech on Friday night. And that has become my single most favorite volunteer job in the world. I block it out. I give up paid gigs to do it because it's significant. So I've done about 35 in a row. And after I'm, I talk about the 100-year lifestyle and obviously the nervous system and the spine and chiropractic care and all of that and how it plays a role. And people love it. They cry. They laugh. It's a special, memorable speech. It's so an hour and a half, when I'm done, people will come up and there'll be a line. Usually, there's usually like 350 people and there's a line. And they say, oh, thank you, Dr. Plask, I want to be a chiropractor, that changed my life, oh, thank you, Dr. Plask, and, they, and lots of tears, we take pictures, etc. Well, this last one, this just happened, something happened that never happened to me before. This kid is standing in the line. And he comes up to me and he says these words that changed my life forever. He said to me, Dr. Plasker, thank you so much. That was amazing. I appreciate it so much. I just wanted you to know 
that I am here because my chiropractor, Dr. Jacob Plasker, my son, changed my life. I had an accident, I had a brain injury, concussion. I could not think, I could not speak, I had to drop out of high school. And I was referred to him by my other chiropractor. I went to see him and I got my brain back. I got my life back. And I want to be a chiropractor. And it floored me because my son had a traumatic brain injury from a fall as a baby. And we were told that he would never walk, talk, or use his arm. And chiropractic saved my son's life when he was 10 months old. And now, you never know how far reaching, right? So this is Jacob after his accident with his brother and sister having a good time. And now he's a chiropractor. Now, this is a... Um, this is the short version of this story, this long story that I'm going to tell the whole story tomorrow. Some of you probably won't be there, so I want you to hear this part of it now because it's relevant. So, Jacob, my son, adjusted Gabe 29 years after Jacob's accident, right? Well, this little boy, this little boy, this baby, was my chiropractor's, is my chiropractor's grandson. My chiropractor was Ernie Landy. So Ernie Landy adjusted me when I was 15 years old, changed my life, and now here I am 35 years later, 40 years later, I get to adjust Eric Landy, his son, Jake. And I'm, there's so many pieces of this story that I just don't have time for, so I'm gonna fly through it. So tomorrow, seriously, get the whole story. Jake had not had a bowel movement in eight days. Crying all the time, becoming toxic, etc. Ernie calls me up and says, hey, Eric, will you please check my grandson? So I said, of course. So I checked Jake. It explodes, C2. The next morning, I get a text message from this baby's dad my mentor's son, after adjusting this baby, my mentor's grandson, and the text message says something like this. Holy crap, Dr. Plasker, no kidding. Because <laughs> it was eight days of poop that finally came out. Now, this kid, Jake, he's seven, six and a half, seven. Healthy as can be. Well, at that Life Leadership Weekend, where Gabe comes up to me and tells me this story, I tell this story at every Life Leadership Weekend. And I'm thinking about where would my Jacob be if it wasn't for Ernie? Where would Gabe be if it wasn't for Jacob? And then I tell this story about where would I be if it wasn't for Ernie, Dr. Landy? And where would my son be if it wasn't for Ernie? And where would Jake's or Ernie's grandson be if it wasn't for me adjusting it, right, the connection? And so I tell this story at Every Life Leadership Weekend. So I tell this story, and there was somebody else in the audience that heard this story. And the next night, there's a dessert party. This doctor comes up to me and says, Dr. Plasker, come with me, man. I want, you got to meet my staff. And he pulls me over to meet his staff. And three young girls that sat through this lecture, went through this whole life leadership process. And they were so excited, so bubbly, so enthusiastic. And one of them says to me, oh, Dr. Plasker, that was great. I'm definitely going to be a chiropractor. The other one says, oh my God, Dr. Plasker, that was really good. I'm not sure if I, I, I may want to be a CA for a long time. I don't know what I want to do. That was amazing. I'm so inspired. The third one was sitting in the corner. Totally different look and feel. 
you could tell that life had not been as easy on her maybe as some other people. And she said to me, and what I'm about to tell you, I'm glad you've digested your food already, because what I'm going to tell you, I'm, it's going to shock you. So I'm preparing you in advance. I'm going to shock you. There's no way that I could prepare you for what I'm about to say. So she says to me, she says, you know what, Dr. Plasker? You told that story of that baby that had not had a bowel movement in eight days. That story changed my life. She said, you know, my baby had not had a bowel movement in eight days. And it was driving me crazy because it, it, he was crying all the time and I didn't know what to do. And I was, I had to get out of the house one day. And so I found somebody, a friend of mine who knew somebody and this guy came and said he would watch my baby. So while I was gone, I went out to just have a nice dinner, to get out of my house to have a nice dinner. And while I was gone, my baby did not stop crying. And to try to get my baby to stop crying, this man picked up my baby, shook my baby, and killed my baby. You told that story. I didn't know about chiropractic care back then. I want to be a chiropractor. My colleagues, we have so much work to do. We have so many people to get to. People that are in desperate need of our care and our leadership. This just happened for me, this interaction was mid-April. I cannot stop thinking about it, especially here's Jake after his adjustment, now he's smiling and now finding out that 1,200 people a year, babies die from shaken baby syndrome. Come on, we need to get every baby checked and that's not even, that's not, that's not even accurate. That's what we know. So it's time. We need to become a soaring flock of eagles. We're such a bunch of solo acts. We need to be a soaring flock of eagles. We need to majestically fly, and we need to do it with collective energy. A common voice in politics, SCCA, if you're not a member, become a member. Contribute to the pack, get involved, bring your friends on board. We need a common voice in politics. And we need a common voice to the people. And you know what, if there's one that you like better, use it. But every one of you right now, starting today, for free, start sharing the content on 100yearlifestyle.com. It is free. Share it, share it, share it, share it, share it. We need strong individuals with collective energy to become the next great generation. And the bottom line, what motivates me even more so today makes me mad that I didn't do my job, that I haven't done enough. Because the reality of it is, lifetime patients equal votes. If you had every person that had ever been in your practice that is madly in love with what you did for them, and they're not there anymore, they are probably not voting our way. And if we took 20%, just 20%, of our collective inactive files in the world or in the United States of America or here in South Carolina and those people were still under care utilizing care the way that you and your family utilizing the care we would win every election we cannot repeat that insanity over the next decade or two or three the stakes are way too high and the enemy is way too strong so honored that our family has been blessed by this great profession. Lisa and I married for 31 years, my kids in this profession. So many of you raising a family, even if they're not chiropractors, they're probably understanding 
Why chiropractic and their great advocates out in the world? Well, I know that all of these blessings, it's a lot of hard work and a lot of energy and there have been times when I know that I have felt like quitting. And at a time that I felt like quitting, I wrote this poem and I'm gonna leave you from this session with this poem. And I wrote it at a time when I felt like quitting and fortunately, I changed my mind. And the poem goes like this. SCCA, thank you for your, you've been an amazing audience in a long hour and 50 minutes. I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Hopefully I'll see you in my next session and visit with us this weekend. The poem goes like this. Where does quit fit? When the going gets tough, the tough get going. When the tough get going, things begin to change. When things begin to change, the tough keep going. When the tough keep going, they begin to build momentum. When the tough build momentum, things become great. When things become great, the tough grow humble. When the tough grow humble, they begin to give back. When the tough give back, they often wonder what took them so long to get going, change, keep going, build momentum, become great, grow humble, and give back. Where does quit fit in this story? And the answer is, quit doesn't fit. Thank you, SCCA, love and appreciate you so much. Good job. Thank you, man. appreciate it. Well Thank you so much. I hope that we can get you to work.